What's up, Josh here. So we've just wrapped up day one of CES and boy, oh boy, there was a lot of walking and of course, a lot of tech. And this year, the thing that I was intrigued most by were wearables. And the nice thing with going to something like CES is that you can actually get hands-on experience with a lot of these products. So let's dive in into the future of wearables, starting with the first one, Lumen. So these are called the Lumen glasses. And while it does look very much like a VR headset, trust me, this is an entirely different product. So what this is, is a headset that helps blind people see in a way. So it's kind of like a self-driving headset in the sense that it uses the tech from self-driving and it brings it over to this headset format. So as you can see in the front, it's got a bunch of different cameras and sensors for obstacle detection and obstacle avoidance with AI. And the idea behind this is that anybody with a visual impairment can sort of just put this on and go through the tutorial and within a couple of minutes, start walking without the need for a guide dog, which can be quite expensive or a cane. Unfortunately, the guide dog is not a scalable, so a scalable solution. There are only 28,000 guide dogs to 40 million blind people. A guide dog costs $70,000 to be trained and you have to dedicate up to two hours a day taking care of it. So you're probably wondering, okay, how does it work? So the way that the headset sort of guides you is with haptics. So in the portion of the headset that covers your forehead, there are tons of these little vibrational motors and they sort of vibrate on the left side, the middle and the right side of your forehead to sort of guide you in that direction. And I did get to try it out. So what you're seeing right now is me taking my first steps with the headset on and I can assure you my eyes are fully closed during this time. And so right now across my forehead, I'm feeling tiny little pulses and vibrations that sort of tell me where to go. And surprisingly for me, it was pretty intuitive and I was able to pick up on it pretty fast. And the thing that sort of confused me is the fact that the vibration part is not where the obstacles are, but rather the vibrations are sort of where you need to head towards. So what you're supposed to do is keep the vibrations in the center of your forehead because the vibrations indicate where the path is. I was thinking it would beep like something is there, no, but it's actually it's, saying it's, it's where opposite. you're supposed to go. Yeah. Okay. And it's really clever how they've done this because let's say you're walking down a busy street with tons of obstacles that you need to avoid, like parked cars, fire hydrants, people walking by. Instead of feeling a bunch of vibrations all over your forehead for each of these obstacles, it is just one vibration, which basically tells you you the path that you need to follow to get to your destination. And yeah, it was a really interesting demo and just something that I never thought I'd be able to experience for myself. Now, the next thing I tried were haptic gloves. These are from a company called Microtube, and it's sort of this very big, stretchy glove that has little pneumatic pistons or motors on the inside that allow you to feel what you're touching, either in virtual or augmented reality. So if you know virtual reality, you can see digital objects, you can maybe hear the digital sound, but you cannot really feel digital objects. Now, the first thing I felt when I tried their demo was raindrops. So as I reached my hand out, I felt these little pressure points on the palm of my hand, and it was a very strange feeling. It definitely didn't feel like rain hitting my hand. Do you feel the raindrops on your fingers? I do. Those are rain, okay, yeah. I feel the raindrops. Uh, but yeah, after that, I was then able to hold a heart and sort of feel how it pulses in my hand. And that one was a lot cooler. Oh. To a heart failure. Oh. Now this whole experience was nice and all, but I think haptic gloves are sort of far from being actually good uh, because the human touch is actually very complex. There's a lot of nerves in our fingers and it's really difficult to sort of replicate the textures of things that we actually touch and make it convincing enough to our brain that we are actually touching something. It's just a very difficult task to do. But nevertheless, it was a really fun experience. Okay, this next one is called the Lotus Ring. And no, it's not just a another smart ring. When I first saw this ring, it seemingly worked like magic. Um, it was this ring where you could just point to something and turn stuff on, like lights, fans, and I didn't understand how it worked, so I had to stop by this booth. For people with limited mobility, veteran soldiers, older adults, or people with disabilities, Lotus is a wearable ring that controls objects at home by pointing. But unlike, say, Alexa, there's no apps, no rewiring, and no internet. So let's have you try one. Yeah, so here, um, let's guess your ring size, maybe. Are you right-handed? That's the infrared transmitter. And then if you close your fist, and then point in that, there you go. You just Whoa. did it. 
So, how does it work? Step one, you put on the ring. Yep. That eliminates needing a smart speaker in every room, because that's what you would have to do today. Yep. The ring goes with you wherever you go. Okay, step two. For any existing wall switch, we're just showing one type here, but for any existing wall switch, you can attach this switch cover magnetically. Now you can manually also use it, so this entire front surface is also a button. So even if you didn't have the ring, other people in the house can still use it. And then, actually, instead of me doing it, why don't you try? <laughs> That's it. That's awesome. Now, the story behind this product was actually, it was designed for people with movement disabilities, specifically in the lower body. So if you imagine somebody in a wheelchair or crutches, doing something as simple as turning on a light or turning on a fan can take a lot more energy for these people. So actually my, my knees are not straight. You can't tell because I'm wearing loose pants, but both me and my brother. And over the years, I've been on and off crutches myself. One night a few years ago, I got into bed having left some hallway lights on, but I was too tired to get back out of bed, hop onto my crutches, hobble 10 feet, turn off the light, hobble back 10 feet and get, you know. So I just slept with the lights on the entire night and woke up in the morning not having slept well. So it turns out there is actually a demand for these types of products. Yeah, this is a great example of repurposing old tech into new tech in a smaller new format. And now for people with movement disabilities, they can easily control parts of their home with a waterproof ring that they have on them at all times. Pretty neat. Now the final booth I stopped by was Sauna. So this is a audio visual device that pulses sound and flashes lights in distinct patterns. And the idea is that these synchronized audio visual experiences balance your brain waves, slows your brain waves down and leads to a deep relaxed state. Now the founder of this company actually started it because he was involved in a really severe spinal injury. And the thing is when you're suffering from an injury or you're in such deep pain and you can't sleep, your quality of life goes down tremendously. Like imagine every night not being able to sleep and only getting like one to two hours. That sounds miserable. Really fascinating stuff. Again, another thing that we take for granted, literally being able to sleep. But uh, yeah, that was my day. And I personally think that one of the greatest things about going to CES and speaking with all of these different startups is that you're often able to actually talk to the founders and CEOs of these startups. And one of my favorite things to discover is the why. Why did you start the company and what problems are you trying to solve? And in a lot of the stories that I heard, these founders either grew up knowing somebody with disabilities or have disabilities themselves. And then there's the realization that they can actually solve a problem and help people with technology and in a lot of cases, change their lives and improve their quality of living. So yeah, it was truly fascinating hearing about these stories in different perspectives and definitely makes you think about your body and the importance of health and how easy it is to take your body for granted. Thanks for watching my coverage of day one of CES. Make sure to get subscribed for tomorrow, day two of CES. I'll see you guys there. Peace.